For this lesson, we're going to practice doing chores. And the grammar for this lesson will be phrasal verbs at home. Check out our phrasal verbs at work if you haven't seen this one already. So here we have some phrasal verbs for general situations. We are going to practice phrasal verbs for doing chores, phrasal verbs for visiting people, and phrasal verbs for thinking and planning. So the reason that we use phrasal verbs in everyday speech is to sound less formal and more casual. So we'll use these phrasal verbs to describe everyday activities in a casual way instead of using our more formal or longer words, which makes for some more natural conversation. So compare the more formal, I bought some groceries. Well, it's not too formal, but still we can make it more casual with, I picked up some groceries. So let's start with phrasal verbs for doing chores. We have five different phrasal verbs, and let's look at the meanings. To pick up means to buy something or bring it home from somewhere outside your home. To drop off means to leave something at another place, which presumably later you will pick up. To clean out is to empty the inside of something. So if there is a box such as a fridge or a closet, you would empty the inside of it, which means you would clean it out. To take out is to remove something or to bring something outside of your home or outside of something that contains things. To put away means to put something in its usual place where it always is. These five phrasal verbs are very, very common for everyday chores around the house or errands outside of the house. And if you look at the second words, the action is often implied in the particle after the verb. So pick up, drop off, clean out, take out, and put away. All phrasal verbs above can be split with an object except for take out in most cases. You can say, I took the trash out, but it's more common to say, I took out the trash. So let's look at some examples. And remember that the second word in the phrasal verb often gives you a clue as to the kind of action. I have to pick up some groceries. Think of the action of taking something in your hands and picking it up. I'm going to drop off my dry cleaning. Think of holding something and then not holding it anymore. I'm going to drop off my dry cleaning. So you no longer have it. Could you clean out the fridge? So think about the inside of the fridge, you are emptying it, so taking things out. Could you take out the recycling? And in this case, taking out would be taking outside. I did my laundry and put away my clothes. So returning to its usual place, outside of your view, you are putting away your clothes. And here are some very common words that also have the same meaning as pick up to give you an idea of when to use them. I have to pick up some groceries means I have to get some groceries. I'm going to drop off my dry cleaning. So you're going to leave something somewhere outside of your home. Could you clean out the fridge? Could you empty the fridge? Could you take out the recycling? It means to remove and take outside or just simply remove. I did my laundry and put away my clothes, which means to return to their usual place. I put away my clothes. So let's take a look at some phrasal verbs for visiting people. So these five phrasal verbs are very common when we talk about visiting someone or meeting someone. To come by means to visit someone's house for a short time. To come over simply means to visit someone's house and is very, very common. Come out means to meet someone outside both of your houses. So you're going to meet at a separate location. To meet up means to meet somewhere unspecified. So you can say, let's meet up later without specifying the location, but it is usually outside people's houses. Swing by, we use to mean to visit briefly before going somewhere else. So in this case, it's usually a short visit. Now these five phrasal verbs are very useful as we talked about when inviting someone over or making plans to meet with friends and these phrasal verbs usually give details on the exact location without talking about the location specifically. 
And just a note about these, none of these can be split by an object. So we have to use these phrasal verbs exactly as they are. And here are some examples of meeting people or visiting people in action. You should come by my place later. What time are you going to come over? You should come out with us. Let's meet up on your finished work. Let's swing by the pool hall before the show. And here's a little more detail on those sentences. You should come by my place later means to visit for a short time. And usually the person means for you to come to their house. What time are you going to come over? This means to visit someone at their house and it can be any amount of time. And this is probably the most casual way of saying that. You should come out with us. In this sense, you are meeting outside both houses in perhaps a bar or a restaurant or just somewhere outside your houses. Let's meet up when you're finished work. This in general means meeting somewhere unspecified. So you're not sure where you will meet up, but you will meet up. Let's swing by the pool hall before the show. So this is meaning visit briefly before going somewhere else. So your main activity is going to the show, but before the show, you'll swing by the pool hall. You'll visit briefly and play some pool before going to the show. And finally, we come to our phrasal verbs for thinking and planning. So we have four different phrasal verbs in this situation, and usually they have to do with finding information. So look up means to research something simple, something that you can easily find on the internet. Figure out means to think about something and make a decision, usually something that is difficult to solve. To check out means to experience something for the first time. So check out a bar, check out a library, check out an event. And end up means to explain the outcome of something or where, where you went last. Now these phrasal verbs are very useful when preparing to go somewhere or deciding on plans or solving a problem. And they usually involve thinking or researching in some way so you can plan your night or your day. So one note about these is that all of them except end up can be split by an object, but it's less common to split these. So if they are split, we often use them with this or that. And now we have some examples of these final phrasal verbs. Could you look up the address for the restaurant? So in this case, the address is easily findable on the internet. I have to figure out why my phone isn't working. Do you want to check out that new bar? We ended up staying home. So note that all of these are not split with objects. You can split up, look up, figure out, and check out, but they're often just used as is. And now a little more detail about what these mean. Could you look up the address for the restaurant? So this one, again, is researching a simple thing that you can easily find. I have to figure out why my phone isn't working. So the meaning of this is thinking about something and finding an answer when maybe it's difficult to solve. So that's when we use figure out. Do you want to check out that new bar? So we use this sometimes when we are experiencing something for the first time. And it's something new or something that you don't have an opinion on yet. We ended up staying home. This last one is talking about an outcome. So maybe you had other plans for the night you wanted to go to a restaurant or a movie, but in the end, you ended up staying home. So that is the meaning of this last one. So let's practice these. Okay, for these practice questions, we're going to use a different word, a phrasal verb, for these words in brackets here. So solve, bring home, remove, visit briefly, outside both homes, and outcome. So make sure you understand which phrasal verbs to use and fill in the blanks with what you've just learned. Okay, now let's look at the answers for these. Can you figure out how to turn on the TV? So maybe this is a new TV and you don't know how to use it yet. So you need to solve the problem of how to turn it on. Can you figure out how to turn on the TV? I have to pick up my dry cleaning so the meaning that we had in the previous slide was bring home. 
So picking up my dry cleaning from one place and bringing it home to my house. I need to take out some cash. So this means remove some cash from a, an ATM, for example. So a, it's something that has something inside of it. So we're emptying it almost. So I need to take out some cash means I need to empty this machine of some cash. It's a little bit of a strange meaning, but this is a very, very common phrasal verb when talking about money. Do you want to swing by the party? So in this case, it's visit briefly. And you can use this maybe if you're going somewhere else. You should come out with us. Remember, this one is going outside of both homes. So you are both going to be out of your homes. We ended up going to the park for a few hours. And this one is something where you plan to do other things, but the outcome was going to the park. All right, for our conversation practice today, we are going to be talking about chores, where phrasal verbs are very, very useful. So just like in our practice section, we're going to read the words in the brackets, visit my house, leave, empty, bring home, solved, visit briefly, return, and visit briefly before going somewhere. And we're going to choose phrasal verbs that have these same meanings to make a very casual conversation. So take a moment, pick the phrasal verbs that have these meanings. We'll see how we do. All right, so here is our sample conversation. We're talking about chores and we're perhaps talking to our friend on the phone about something you're going to do today or some things that you have to do. So the first one, do you want to come over? Remember, the meaning was visit my house. I have to drop Jess off at work. In this way, it means leave this person at their job. So drive them to their job and leave them there. Clean out my closet. This means to empty your closet. Remember, there are contents inside the closet. So cleaning them out means to empty. And pick up some groceries. So in this case, we are bringing home the groceries, buying them and bringing them home. So we use pick up. Okay, once you've figured out your plans, so figured out means to solve what you're going to do for the day, you should come by for a bit. And this again means to visit briefly. Sounds good. I'll call you when I've put everything away. So this person just bought groceries and when you get home, you have to put your groceries away in the fridge and in the cupboard. And maybe I can swing by. So here, perhaps this person is very busy and they're going to swing by their friend's house before going somewhere else. All right, so let's read this through. This is a very casual conversation and we'll see how it sounds. Hey, what are you doing today? Do you wanna come over? I've got a few chores to do. I have to drop Jess off at work, clean out my closet, and pick up some groceries. You're busy. Okay, once you've figured out your plans, you should come by for a bit. Sounds good. I'll call you when I put everything away, and uh, maybe I can swing by. Very well done. You figured it out. So I hope you feel more confident using these phrasal verbs for doing chores or everyday activities or planning visits with friends. And the next time you have a day off, perhaps you can use them. Thanks and see you in the next lesson.